Bang! Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency and blockchain aggregate news on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, so you've been warned. Because look, look, here I come in three. Look, look, two. Look, 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 one. Bang! Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. And my name is Shamari Clark, and I will be your host for the remainder of the evening. Yes. Bang, bang, bang. We have some great shit to talk about today. Boom. Man, I had to choose the greatness. Ha <laughs> ha, yes, brothers. I had to choose the greatness. Yes, there's much greatness to be had. <laughs> all right, brothers, let's get into it. All right, first of all, let's get some crypto crypto talk. Maker DAO releases its multi-collateral DAI coin. Apparently, you're going to make some money off this thing just by holding it. So look, look. Talk about that. Oh, yeah. And then here, now we get into the goods. Yes. Now we get into the goods. So, my favorite ETF to be denied, Bitwise. Well, guess what the SEC said? We're going to revisit that. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. They're going to revisit the Bitwise ETP, ETF, my bad, proposition. Uh, we're going to talk about that. And then, bang, UK. Now, they're getting close. They're getting close to getting on this champion nation list. They're getting real daggone close. And what I'm going to tell you right now is, pff, damn, it's super. So, the UK defines cryptos, defines crypto's legal status. We are going to talk about that. Then we'll do the usual, the shout outs, bang, airdrop, and the daily summary. Bang, all right. Bang, look. So let's begin how we begin, brothers. Sisters, dogs and cats. Look, let's do it. Let's get her done. See what we got here. Let's do a little refresh. Is it going to behave today? What is with this site? I should refresh this before I <laughs> before I start the show. <sighs> Dang gone. What the hell? All right, look, look. Price of Bitcoin's eight thousand one hundred fifty-four dollars. When I left you on Saturday, it was eight thousand five hundred forty-two dollars. We have gone down. What was that about three hundred ninety bucks around there, somewhere like that? All right. Look, look. Oh yes. Let's hold on. Hold on. Let me arrange everything here. Let me get myself situated. Yes, situated. Look, look. Top 10 of the day, brothers. Yes. Usual suspects. Top 10. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Tether, Litecoin, EOS, Binance Coin, Bitcoin SV, and Stellar. Still holding on the number 10. Market moves of the day, brothers. <sighs> Shit's on sale. If you missed anything, I can't wait to see what this V-chain is like. Please be back down to like three. If you see anything on... Oh, well, well, we're not at that part yet. Look, look, single digits up, single digits down, brothers. <laughs> yes, I got ahead of myself there. All right, market moves today. Single digits up, single digits down. Looks like really just a bunch of single digits down. Yeesh. All right, well, fuck it. Just single digits down today, brothers. Sales. All right, there's a single digit up. All right, single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Two. Single digits up, single digits down. All right. Let's look at the top 10 losers of the day, brothers. You see anything on here you like, you go get it because it is on sale. Bye. Top 10 losers of the day. Educare, Decred, Aurora, Chili's, Holo, Omnisco, Ox, Steam, Augur, and Qtum. Let's see who made money today. I just saw some crazy number right there. Yeah, this thing. What is this? MMO coin, 274%. All right, top 10. Oh, yeah, top 10 winners of the day, brothers. MMO coin, Unicoin, Fusion, Lisk, Theta, Seal, Illcoin, Centrality, ABVC, Coin, and Things that Synthetics Network. Let's see what the total market cap of the day is. 
What are we at? 222.7. All right. When I left you on Saturday, ha, huh, it's pretty funny. We're at 233.7. So we went down exactly $11 billion. And uh, 24 hour volume is 76.1. Oh, that's a big volume, though. Okay. Well, compared to last week. So that's nice. We're going back up to the... I told you, I like it. I want us to be, you know, high volumes. Shows activity in the market. All right. Uh, we're at 76.1 today. When I left you on Saturday, we were at 63.1. So we went up... Uh, what is that? $13 billion from... Uh, Saturday. All right. Great. Great. Yeah. So those are nice volumes. I want to keep going up. Keep going up in volume. That's activity. That's activity. Whether the prices go up or down, eh, doesn't matter yet till the institutions get here. But you want to see increasing volume, total volume in the market. All right. Look, look. Let's begin. Bar. Maker DAO launches its new DAI token today. Multi-collateral DAI called MCD. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's check out its new token. Oh, and I brought this up. It's usually, I don't really care about the launch of a token, but just in case I have some, some of you guys are hodlers, there's ways for you to get money. So I got to show you that so you can move your money. You got to move it to this other place. That's why I'm doing this. I don't really give a fuck about, who gives a shit about some new coin launch. <laughs> but you're going to make money. And so, that's why it's the greatest show in the multiverse, fuckstick. Yes. Make sure my subscribers get all the, all the money they can. We're milking this cow. Oh, yeah, we're milking this cow hard. <laughs> we haven't talked about that so much this year. But we're here to milk this cow. And I'm here to help you do just that. So look, look, maker hodlers. Let me show you how to go get this bread. Look. All right. <clears throat> maker, DAO. The organization behind the DAI stablecoin. Hold on one second. All right. Just had to make sure everything was working. All right. Uh, Maker DAO, the organization behind the DAI stablecoin has just launched a new DAI token now, named as Multi-Collateral DAI, MCD. The new cryptocurrency will also be a stablecoin in the same way that the old DAI was. Uh, this new token will be backed by several kinds of assets, a contrast with the single collateral DAI, SCD. Um which will be called SAI from now on. Oh, yeah, and they're changing names and all sorts, of, all sorts of stuff. So the idea is to phase out SAI and turn MCD into the standard DAI stablecoin over time. The decision was announced back in October, and it is finally happening. At the moment, the full shift from one token to the other, to the other one does not have an exact date, but all tokens are expected to be converted eventually. DAI users can already convert their SCD to MCD if they wish by using Argent Wallet. So if you want to get that new token already, bang, use your Argent Wallet and you can do that. Another new feature is that users from the network will now be able to use the Compound Protocol to get an interest in their tokens. To do it, they should remove their DAI from Compound and then move the, the converted new tokens there. So... You're going to make interest off these. In other words, passive income. You just hold it and you're going to get money. So, you, But you got to move it from, where is this thing? From compound. Wait, to do it, they should remove. Oh, you got to move your DAI from compound and then move the converted new tokens there. So like it said right here, hodlers, um, go get your new tokens here through this Argent wallet, then move those new tokens to this compound. Bang, bang. Sounds like you're going to make some interest. That's what they're saying. You're going to collect interest, meaning just as long as it sits there, you're going to make money. 
The CEO of the Maker Foundation, uh, Rune Christensen, affirmed that the launch plans of the network include two other features. The DAI savings rate and the collateralized debt positions. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what a CDO, a collateralized debt obligation? That's some deep dark, uh, that's some uh, shadow banking stuff. Uh, that's deep in the derivatives market, boy. That's deep in the guts. <laughs> After the launch, that's why we had to bail out Wall Street when the, partially why we had to bail out Wall Street during the housing crash, because their CDOs were gonna crumble. Uh, anyway, we're not going to get into that. That's too deep. Yes, even for this channel. Look, so after the launch, the plans of the foundation are to keep increasing the decentralization of the ecosystem. In an interview with Reuters, Mariana Conti, the head of smart contracts at Maker DAO, affirmed that the foundation's goal is to cease to exist in three years, to decentralize the network, and depend only on the governance model. In this model, the token holders... Make decisions about the future of the network. Oh, man. So, in other words, uh, <laughs> so, so in a few years, the asylum, uh, the inmates will be running the asylum. But look, for now, bang, go get your interest. You get your new token. So, get, uh, let's go over it one more time for the hodlers. Look, look, maker hodlers. Go over here and convert your your stuff to the Wait, wait, let's do this. Convert it to SCD. Oh, my bad, my bad. Sorry, sorry. Convert your SCD to MCD by using this Argent wallet. Step number one. Step number two to make this money is, whoop, is you should get your DAI from Compound and then move the converted new tokens. So these MCD tokens, move these MCD tokens to compound and uh there you go you're gonna you're gonna get where is it yeah you're gonna get interest you're gonna earn interest on those but which is good because that's what do you know that's what people talk about with the libra coin right is they're saying well libra is not going to give the people the interest on the stable coin right like people are like why why is facebook doing this why is facebook yeah because they earn interest on it Right? That's where they make their money. They're gonna make their money off of all that interest. And if they could if they could get fuck a couple hundred million people to use this thing, yeah, well they make interest off those people holding that shit. They don't give the interest to the user. They're keeping it. Facebook and the the, the Libra consortium are gonna keep the interest. You know that's how stable coins work, right? They make interest. Stable coins do. All right, so not make it they earn interest that's sorry that's the <laughs> make it they earn interest and so you know that's why when people freak out about this libra thing Mark zuckerberg don't give a fuck about all that take over this take over that he just wants to earn all this passive income <laughs> yeah at, at an at a at a fucking super mega corporate level <laughs> yeah i mean him and his buddies are gonna earn all that interest off of it all right, so that's how they work. So, maker hodlers, bye. You're welcome. All right, let's, now let's get. All right, now let's get to some serious money up in this bitch. Look, look, bye. The UC, the the SEC takes another look at rejected Bitwise Bitcoin ETF proposal. No, look, look, fuck sticks. No, oh, now we're gonna talk. Oh, we're gonna get into some chit chat, some yap yap, brothers. Look. So, Bitwise. If you're new here, Bitwise is my was my favorite ETF proposal. And for you brothers who've been here, well, you know why, right? They said we're going to get our price discovery from 10 fucking exchanges. 10. 10 exchanges. I mean, SEC, what more do you want? I mean, tag on. Um, and so, <laughs> hold on, brothers. Look. This is such good news. It's just crazy. They're getting it from 10 exchanges. So, and I want to say something as well. And so, but they they rejected the the proposal, right? They told Bitwise, nah, dog, you're not, you're not, we're not going to give you the ETF. 
Well, let me tell you what happened. Well, I don't know what happened, but let's talk a little bit. Let's just chit chat here a little bit. Why are they? Why are they? Hold on, let me get a sip. Oh yeah. Why are they? Why are they um, taking another look at it? Yeah. Well, you you guys remember the 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 the, the video I showed you uh, that I posted of the. Uh, remember when the SEC was in front of the House? What was that about a month and a half ago? <laughs> Right. And that Republican guy, he yelled at Jay Clayton. Jay Clayton is the chairman of our SEC here in America, if you're new. Right. Remember, and he yelled at Jay Clayton and he was like, do we have to do do we have to make the regulations? Or are you guys going to do it? And Jay Clayton was like, well, we're going to get around. It. And the guy was like, well, hurry up. Right. Raised his voice at the SEC chairman. Right. The politician. He said, well, hurry up. Just like that. Like like that. Oh, yeah. And so all of a sudden, look at this. The SEC rejected the Bitwise Bitcoin ETF proposal. They're taking another look. I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now what's going on. Right? The politicians around here in America now, they're sick and tired. They're sick of it. They want crypto regulation. Let's go, some of them. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you what happened. That guy and probably a bunch of a bunch of these congressmen went to the SEC and they said, Why'd you reject that Bitwise thing? And the SEC was like, well, because it's open to market manipulation. Then the politician said, are you sure? Yeah, it's open to market. Are you sure? Why don't you take another look? <laughs> Maybe you missed something. You see what I'm saying? You know how they, mm, just a little pressure. Maybe you missed something. Take another look. <laughs> yes, you know how it goes down. That's how those power plays work. I think you might have missed something. Take another peek. And that's why, because look, uh, the SEC rejected the Bitwise thing, what was that, three, four weeks ago? They rejected it on the grounds of market manipulation. Well, market manipulation, right? Yeah, well, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed, so what is there to look at? Why do you need to revisit? Well, I'll tell you why you need to revisit. Because the politician said, look, look. I think you might have missed something there. Why don't you take another look? <laughs> look a little harder. Are you sure? Are you sure you want to reject that? Take another look. Maybe you missed something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Perhaps you missed something. Hmm? Yes. That's the power play. Let's look, look, here comes China. Look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know it. You know it. And let me tell you something around these parts. Look, look. People are getting hungry for crypto. So those politicians, nothing's changed. I'm being silly, though, but seriously, nothing's changed, right? Yeah, they just rejected the the the... The, the ETF proposal a few weeks ago. Yeah, nothing's changed, so why would you revisit it? Yeah, because someone in the background said, yeah, why don't you take another look? <laughs> why don't you take another look? Yes, all right, let's check it out, brothers. Look, look, bye. And the, but the other reason why it's so amazing is that, you see, a Bitcoin ETF is so amazing because, like, it's a new investment vehicle, number one. Number two is, like I told you, once the SEC approves something here in America, well, that's it. Like I told you in Q1, and I'm still holding to this, if the SEC approves something all around the world, their SECs, their version of the SECs, will use the exact same fucking standard. They're going to know the standard to use. You remember we read the, the guy in Hong Kong admitted it, right? What was that? About four months ago, right? That Hong Kong guy, he was like, yeah, well, here in Asia, everyone's waiting to see what the SEC does, right? He admitted it. Yeah, we're all just waiting, right? So that we do it up to that standard. And that's that, right? And so that's good in that way in that if they do obviously, sorry, not obviously, but if they do discover that hmm, perhaps this isn't so bad, yes, why don't you take another look? <laughs> if they discover that it's not so bad, 
and then they do and they do give it they do approve it bang all across the world just like i said earlier and i still i still hold to that i still hold to that and um and so that's one reason worldwide um now everyone understands what the sec standards are but secondly this soccer mom and dad soccer mom and dad like i said they're not going to be coming here and buying bitcoin and crypto like how we do you know cutting and pasting this and that and moving fiat from here to there and putting shit on ledgers and all that they're not going to get into all that but sure i want to make money off bitcoin through an etf fine easy right like it's not that they don't want exposure to bitcoin but they don't you know people don't want to go through the hassle of all that shit right that we go through <laughs> you know and um yeah but an etf all right now i have a, now now my portfolio is exposed to the price movement of, of bitcoin i don't need to own bitcoin right a and another thing about but the uh, the other thing that is so good about this is that etfs soccer mom and dad know how to use them soccer mom and dad know how to use etfs i remember back in the early 2000s when etfs became like this big thing yeah regular people use it right and that's what i mean in, in terms of investment vehicles now let, like, let's look at the investment vehicle arena right we, we've got the options coming out right we read about that cme options coming out backed is coming out with the options we talked about that that's the the nasdaq boys versus the cme boys or sorry, the New York Stock Exchange boys versus the CME boys battling to see who can get the most <laughs> investment vehicles out first, right? But those investment vehicles are for buying, you know, institutions. You know, soccer mom and dad didn't know how to fucking trade a futures. You know, they don't know nothing about no options, how to create a strangle, a straddle. <laughs> you know, they don't know all that. But I tell you what soccer mom and dad do know about ETFs. ETFs, it's on fucking... ETFs became a big deal, I remember, in the early 2000s. And, uh, like, E-Trade and all them started rolling them out. Yeah, soccer mom and dad are gobbling them up. They can understand that. They can understand that shit. Right? An exchange-traded fund. Okay, it's in a fund on an exchange. Great. Right? You make the money. You don't have to buy that underlying asset, right? And that was the craze. Right? ETFs were the craze in the early 2000s, right? I mean, they still are. I mean, they're still huge. I mean, it's popular. I mean, if you've got an E-Trade account, I bet you got a fucking monster list of ETFs now, right? And that's the other reason why this is good is because, like I said, soccer mom and dad, they're not gonna go through the crap we do, but yeah, if a Bitcoin ETF shows up on Homeboy's E-Trade account, all he's got to do is click a button, and there you go, buddy. You're good to go. You're Bitcoined up now, in a sense, through an ETF, through this investment vehicle, through the investment vehicle. And so that's why this story is amazing on multiple levels. Not just, e not just that the SEC is going to revisit this. In other words, someone said, hmm, you take, a, take another look. I think you might have missed something. You know what I mean? Put a little pressure on them. Not only is it good for that, but and not only is it good for that, well, now that the, I don't want to get too happy, so I don't want to say this because I don't want to make people too happy and it doesn't happen. But just if it gets approved, now the world knows what the standard is. The standard, Right? That's number two, why it's so good. And then number three, why it's so good. Not only do institutional investors, obviously they're gonna come and get the ETFs, but soccer mom and dad know what an ETF is. They know what that shit is. They have them. Soccer dad fucking goes home every night and probably trades ETFs. A lot of them do. So that's the beauty of the ETF vehicle, right? Options, yeah, that's for, you know, experts. Futures, it's for experts. I know these guys are on BitMEX and everything trading futures, but those are just <laughs> nine to five guys getting crushed by each other. But when the pros come, it'll be different. But ETFs is something that everybody knows. All right. Look, look, and yap, yapping. Well, you know what I'm saying? It's how it goes, brothers. 
This is good news. Fuck, take another look. Take another look. Why are you taking another look? Nothing's changed. There's nothing to look at. Yeah, I'll tell you what the, what changed. I'll tell you what changed. Those fucking politicians went to Jay Clayton and said, hey, buddy, <laughs> you better take another hard look. I think you missed something there. <laughs> and Jay's like, oh, I understand, sir. <laughs> I understand completely. Well, I hope so. I hope. I hope so. I hope so. Ten exchanges for price discovery. Come on, right? The 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 the, the futures that we. All right. Let me just just one more piece of yap yap, brothers. Just one more little piece. Okay. Here in America, the CME futures are based on three exchanges. The back futures are based on three exchanges. Wow. Ah, there's no market manipulation, is there? The futures seem to be working out all right. No one's complaining. Right? I mean, if you want to manipulate something, futures, that's the shit to manipulate like a motherfucker. Right? No one's complaining. So the 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 the, the fear the SEC says they have, the fear they have of the market manipulation, which is true. And like I said, no one likes to be cheated. So I'm not dissing the SEC. I mean, that's the whole point. America, the SEC, doesn't allow Americans to be cheated. They allow you to lose your money, <laughs> but it's if you choose to. But getting cheated, no. No, no, no. That doesn't happen in America. And, and so, right? So I understand their, 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 their thing. Of course I'm angry. Fuck, I thought we were going to have approval in April. I used to tell you guys that, right? <laughs> but um, <laughs> But now it's time now. It's time. It's time for approval. Ten exchanges. It ain't getting any better. And look, Xi Jinping said he's coming. Xi Jinping. It's the president of China. He said he's coming. Were you going to leave America behind? I don't think so. You tell that fucking regulator. <laughs> yeah, like I just said, oh, ten times. You tell that regulator. I think you might have missed something. Take another look at that application right there. Yes. Understand? Do we have an understanding? I hope that's what went down. Look, look. I hope there's an understanding. <laughs> All right, brothers. Now let's read. Yes. Oh, Lee. I'm just chain smoking like a motherfucker. I don't care. Look. The United States Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. Is reviewing, this, is reviewing its decision to reject the Bitcoin exchange-traded fund filing from Bitwise Asset Management and New York Stock Exchange ARCA. Oh, yeah. You better take another look. Yes. Are you sure you looked over Are you, are you sure you looked at it thoroughly? Why don't you take another look at that application? Yes. Yes. So, look, look. Taking a second look. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Why are you looking? Yes. I believe you might have missed something there. Look again. <laughs> look again. Look, look. Oh, brothers, I love you guys. Yeah, we're going to make this bread so bad. Look. Yes. In an announcement on November 18th, the commission said that the ETF filing for Bitwise Asset Management New York Stock Exchange will return to review. Return to review. We are just going to magically return it to review. <laughs> yes. Following the earlier rejection for not meeting the necessary requirements. <laughs> well, what's changed? Hmm. Hmm. That's what's changed. Hmm. <laughs> look, look. In October, the U.S. regulator said that the applicants did not meet the necessary requirements regarding possible market manipulation and illicit activities. The SEC wrote at the time. The commission is disapproving this proposal rule change because, as discussed below, New York Exchange ARCA has not met its burden under the Exchange Act and commission's rules of practice to demonstrate that its proposal is consistent with the requirements of Exchange Act Section 6B, Section 6B5, and in particular, the requirements that the rules of a national securities exchange be d designed to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and, and practices. That's the whole point. Now, if you're new here, that's the whole thing. The SEC is just upset. Not upset, but 
I mean, they're protecting us. I mean, they're protecting the American citizen. I mean, you know, I mean, I get it from market manipulation. It is. Look, look. It's a tiny, shitty little market. We've been through this before here, but if you're new, yeah, $222 billion. That's not fuck all. That's fuck all. That's tiny. There are hedge funds with more money than this. <laughs> Fidelity has 25 times more than this whole market. So manipulation is real. It is real, you know, like, so I'm not going to bullshit you about it. Like, it is real. And like I said before, in the markets, that's one thing you don't want, manipulation. You don't want cheating, right? Like I told you, I lose trades, sure. I win 7 out of 10, well, 8.2 out of 10 trades, right? Yeah, so I lose 2 out of 10 trades. Yeah, and do I cry about it? No, because I'm not cheated. Yeah, you got me, you fucker. All right, nice one. You got me, you motherfucker. I'll get you next time. It's a gentleman's game, you know? I get these fucks, they get me every once in a while, right? And, and you're not cheated, and that's what the whole point of the SEC is about. Like, you can't have people getting cheated. Right? Well, not Americans, you know? They're not going to put up with that. But, I mean, daggone. Bitwise said they're going to take price discovery from 10 exchanges. Okay? If you don't know what price discovery is, Go to fucking Investopedia and type in price discovery, okay? It's the price of your product, of the asset in your product, okay? They said they're going to take it from 10. <laughs> like, huh? They, you, so in other words, if someone wanted to manipulate a Bitwise ETF, you'd have to manipulate all 10 exchanges. I'm not saying that can't happen, but come on, motherfucker. Are guys going to really go through all that? Nah, man, I don't think so. It's not hurting uh, right now. Like I said, um, the CME futures contracts, yeah, they're with three exchanges only. Same with the backed ones, only three exchanges. They're not market manipulated. So, yeah, like I said, and I, like, like I said, like I think that's what the politician said. Look, man, we got futures contracts. They're not manipulated. I think you better go back and take another look at that application. I think you better go take a hard look at that, motherfucker. Understand? <laughs> Do we have an understanding? You know what I'm saying? Anyways. Oh, and here it talks about... Oh, they talk about it? All right. All right. So, continued concern about market manipulation. One of the regulators' major concerns when evaluating new commodity-based ETFs is establishing whether the underlying market is resistant to manipulation. Understood. 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 In the SEC order that rejected Bitwise's application, the commissioners wrote that the evidence insufficiently supporting supported the claim that the real spot market for Bitcoin, when fake and or non-economic data is removed, is sufficiently resistant to manipulation. So remember what they did. Bitwise came out with their application, and I think they were going to do like, wasn't it something stupid like, they were going to use like 25 exchanges or just something dumb, like crazy huge, right? And then the SEC was like, well, blah, 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 blah. And then what Bitwise did was they did this study or something like that, right? It was like some sort of study where they got the real price. In other words, they got the real spot market prices and, and got rid of the fake or non-economic data, right? Like... Remember they 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 went and they showed that um, um, a lot of these exchanges, the volumes are bullshit. They're wash trading, they're they're manipulated, like they're straight bullshit. And that's why I'm telling you, these these institutions guys aren't coming here for this kind of crap. Right? They're fake and they're bullshit. Um, and Bitwise did some study where they found the real prices. Like so they they said, look, SEC, there are ten exchanges. That there is, oh, that's what they did. So they looked through all the exchanges and they found the 10 that had real numbers. Like, in other words, their spot prices are real. It's not wash trading. It's not manipulated. And they said, look, SEC, we're going to use these 10 for our price discovery, right? And uh, yeah, right. That's how they did it. And that's why I thought that one was going to work. I thought that one was going to get approved because, fuck, you know, 
you're using the real numbers and, and you're using 10 of them, 10, right? A person would have to manipulate 10 exchanges in one day at the same time <laughs> to, to change your price, right? So, all right, so you get that. So, however, today the regulator announced, I mean, I know you guys already know that, but for the new people. However, today the regulator announced that it is reviewing the proposal. So, once again, any party or person may file a statement in support of or in opposition to the action made pursuant to delegated authority no later than December 18th, 2019. So, I explained to you that's called public comment. Everything your government does, the public always gets time to comment on it before they make their decisions. All right. So, public comment is going to go till December 18th, right? Right here. So, you have, you can put your comments in no later than December 18th. That's called public comment. So, look, look. The SEC further points out that the order to disapprove to disapprove the proposed listing of the ETF from Bitwise, uh, Bitwise Asset Management and ARCA, will, New York Stock Exchange ARCA, will remain in effect pending the commission's review. So, obviously, it's they're still banned. They're, not, they're still not allowed to do it. But uh, pending review. Yeah. All right. Timeline for the first crypto ETF approval. Charles Liu, CEO of the confidential ledger protocol Findora, recently said of, of a realistic timeline for the first crypto ETF approval that he is doubtful that the process will be quick. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Hold on. I'll, I'll yap yap in a second. For a Bitcoin ETF proposal to gain SEC approval, the sponsor will need to prove that real price discovery is happening as opposed to market manipulation. Exactly. We went through that. Bitwise chose those 10 exchanges that have real prices, not wash trading and and pump and dumps and just bullshit. Lou did not believe this will happen in the near future, adding the SEC will require surveillance sharing agreements with significant cryptocurrency exchanges. I know, and that's what I was saying. Chain analysis, right? Surveillance sharing. So, right, that's what chain analysis, right? That's what I was saying. Like, if all these exchanges just deploy chain analysis, right, that's surveillance. That's the whole, you know, getting FATF compliant uh, stuff, right? All that stuff there. You know, anti-money laundering, um, terrorist financing, know your client stuff, right? KYC, ATM, and, uh, or sorry, AML and... ATF, right? And so that's what he's saying. Agreements with significant cryptocurrency chain, a requirement that few foreign domiciled exchanges will agree to. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But that's the shit right there. I mean, I agree with this. I don't agree with this guy. All right, let me let me break this down. If the SEC is taking a second look, well, nothing's changed. They're getting pressure. But what this guy's saying is true in that, yeah, if all these exchanges would just launch chain analysis on their exchanges, all right, well, SEC ain't going to cry about that anymore. Bang, your shit's real, right? All your your data and your, your, your um, you know, your stuff is real. Uh, I've said that already, but anyways, industry professionals seem to display a certain level of reserved optimism, believing that at some point, the crypto industry will get its coveted prize, but not just yet. Oh, we're going to get this prize. We'll see. But like I said, nothing has changed. So, you know, the SEC rejected Bitwise's ETF proposal, what, about a month ago? Well, nothing's changed. So why are you doing a, a reassessment? Like I just said, because some politicians said, hey, Jay, why don't you take another look? <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's not going to work. It's market manipulation. Are you sure? Why don't you look again? Right? That's that kind of pressure that politician, you know, take another look. Are you sure? Maybe you missed something. Take another look. <laughs> yes. Those are the nice ways. Look, look, it's the nice ways to do it. That's how you put pressure on a fucker. Take another look, bitch. You sure? Mm. But yeah, guys, so this is great for us. Bye. Great for crypto. Bye. Great for humanity. 
upgrade for the multiverse. All right. And then, bang, Britain. Here comes our boys from the UK. I told you these boys are coming. Oh, yeah, they're coming. I'm telling you, they're coming. Like I told you, you see the British? You know, they're smarty pants. You know, they're a bunch of smarty pants over there. Right? You hear it in their accent. Right? It's all smart. Right? <laughs> I'm being silly. Of course, they've got idiots over there, too. But you know what I mean. The average one's a smarty pants. Let me tell you, they do something just always a little bit better than everyone else, right? They always got to do it just a little better, right? <laughs> That's how they do it. Just what we call a cut above. Just a cut above. And anyways, look. Public statement aims to define legal status of crypto assets in the UK. But, and look at Big Ben right there. You see this, this clock? It's called Big Ben. It's their famous clock in London. And look at Big Ben. It's chiming. It says, time for crypto. Yes. I was thinking about it tonight. But we're not going to put the UK on the on the nation of the the the, the, na- the champion nations list yet. Because what they're doing is they're just doing their crypto stuff piecemeal, piece by piece by piece, right? All the nation of champions, right, all came out with just the full crypto law. It was like, this is our crypto law, all right? And then the president or prime minister signed it in and boom, they did the full thing. What the UK is doing is <clears throat> they're regulating it piece by piece by piece, Right? And so, yeah. they don't get added yet. All right, look, look. Let's proceed. The United Kingdom Jurisdiction Task Force of the Log Tech Delivery Panel published a statement concerning the status of cryptocurrencies, distributed ledger technology, DLT, and smart contracts under English and Welsh private law. So, guy. This affects English and Welsh private law. Look, look. UK Entrepreneur Network Tech. All right, hold on. Let me calm down. Because this is exciting, though. I mean, this is this is good stuff right here. Yes, the Brits are coming. Don't don't get it twisted. When those savages arrive, oh yeah, you'll see. That's why I live on British time, baby. Look, it's that important. <laughs> UK Entrepreneur Network. Tech Nation announced the paper's publication on November 18th. The document attempts to address the legal uncertainties of cryptocurrency and recognizes crypto assets as tradable property. So, by they are recognizing crypto assets as tradable. Actually, let's just, just, just do this. Actually, let's not even do tradable. Just property. Tradable property and smart contracts as enforceable agreements. In other words, legal contracts that's how they're going to look at it so if it's a crypto like uh v chain property if it's uh well like it says if it's a smart contract some shit from ethereum or something okay that's a legal arrangement why well, and an enforceable agreement contract that's how they're going to do it um yeah that's how they're going to do it um the importance of regulating blockchain Law Tech Delivery Panel Director Jennifer Swallow uh, noted that the worldwide smart contract market is expected to reach 300 million by 2023, while the World Economic Forum predicts that one tenth of the global GDP will be stored on a blockchain by 2027. Due to this, she thinks adapting regulations on these new technologies is particularly important, stating, "It is great. It is great to see." the adaptability of our common law system to fast-changing technology demonstrated in this landmark legal statement from the UKJT. Tech Nation is excited to work with the Law Tech Delivery Panel on leading initiatives such as this to support business growth, clarity, regulatory clarity, in law, and the evolution of new tech. Bye! Deep. This is deep. That's good stuff. So, Tech Nation notes that many believe legal uncertainty is the most significant barrier to cryptocurrency and smart contract adoption. Exactly. Regulatory clarity. We need regulatory clarity. 
Uh, the legal statement in question is reportedly a substantial step toward addressing the lack of regular. Oh, there it, it says the word right there. Regulatory clarity. What I've been telling you guys about since last year. Actually, I thought this was going to be the year of regulatory clarity. Yes. Apparently, I was wrong. <laughs> well, I thought of, for American regulatory clarity. I didn't know what was going to happen in another country. I was hoping. I thought the SEC was going to already approve some stuff in April and we'd be. Anyways, brothers, bang, the tsunami is still on the way. <laughs> Chancellor to the High Court and Chair of the UK Jurisdiction Task Force, Jeffrey Voss, also recognized the potential of crypto assets and smart contracts, saying, in legal terms, uh, so let's hear what he has to say. In legal terms, crypto assets and smart contracts undoubtedly represent the future. It's the future. So we got to regulate this. This is what's happening. This is what's coming. Let's get ourselves together. Let's get on board. Let's, let's get this thing done right. Yes. So it's the future. I hope that the legal statement will go a long way towards providing much needed market confidence, legal certainty, and predictability in areas that are of great importance to the technological and legal communities and to the global financial services industries. But, in other words... We hope this gives you some regulatory clarity. That was a long way to say it. <laughs> As you know, politicians are. They get a little long-winded. Was he a politician? Who was he? Yeah, yeah, he was part of that task force shit. Yeah, that's how they talk. <laughs> Look, per the report, the statement will serve as a foundation for the mainstream adoption of crypto assets and smart contracts in the United Kingdom and provide a strategic advantage to blockchain startups operating in the country. <clears throat> yeah, now they know, you know their legal standing. The Law Tech Delivery Panel is a team of industry experts and insiders from the government and judiciary space, which aims to help the growth of the UK's judiciary system. So, bye! Yes! There we go. Got some legal status of assets in the UK. Let's check it out one more time, brothers. Crypto assets are tradable property, but its smart contracts are enforceable agreements. But, yes. All right. So here we go. They still don't get on the Nation of Champions yet because, remember, they still have to do that. Remember, they were still thinking of banning... They were saying they were going to ban uh, der crypto derivatives trading for for um, individuals. And um, so they still have more to do. So that's why you don't get to get they don't get to get listed yet. Right. These guys did their whole thing. Right. You got to have your whole thing or you don't get on there. Yes. We run a tight ship around these parts. <laughs> look, look, brothers, let's move on. Oh, and I got a story for you. All right, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Guatemala's trying to get on the list of champions. Look, look, Guatemala. We'll talk about you tomorrow. Look, look. Bye. What do we got? Brandy Middleton followed me. All right. Smart choice, buddy. Brandy Middleton. What really matters will always stay. All right. See you, brother. Bye. Freeman. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. <laughs> What's he talking about? Oh, and that's what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. I know. I was thinking of doing... All right, so hold on. Let me tell everybody. Family offices finally accept the benefits of investing in Bitcoin. And then he says here, soccer mom and dad, bang, bang. <laughs> you dag on right, Freeman. You dag on right. Don't worry. I was going to do it today, but it's such a long article. And you know what that article... Oh, man. I'm going to have to yap, yap, yap hard. So... I already had these ones chosen, and so I'm saving this one for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, just get yourself some popcorn and settle in because it's probably going to be a long one. Longer one. <laughs> so, Freeman, bang on the article. Let's proceed. Oh, yeah, tomorrow's going to be juicy. <laughs> What's Sweetie saying? First of all, Sweetie, stallion. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Yes. Bye. 
What is she saying? Oh, this was the thing she said she's up thinking about it. Oh, because she said, right, I did the story on Saturday. And what she said, so you can see down here, she said something about, hold on, I'll just show you what she said. Where was that? Oh, here it is right here. I just keep picturing two mega giants racing to collect customers first. CME, New York Stock Exchange. Go. So, right, like I told you, it's the CME and the New York Stock Exchange boys battling right now. They're fighting to get their <laughs> the investment vehicles first. You know, they're institutional grade, so they're trying to get, you know, trying to get them. I mean, it's that's business. She said, go. All right, and so she had this. Yeah, look at that. Go. Bang. That's basically what it looks like. You got the you got you got the C you got the New York Stock Exchange boys on the left and you got the CME boys on the right. Or whatever one you want to choose. Yes. So I told her, because she does. She always sees the proper part of what I'm trying to tell you guys. And so I told her, as always, so I'm down here. I told her, as always, you caught the point, sweetie. Yep. Two monsters fighting to bring us their rich friend's money. I told you guys this last year. This is taking candy from a baby. <laughs> what we're doing here, clack, clack. Once we're do what we're doing here is once in a lifetime. This is taking candy from babies. Yeah, they want it. It's not like you got to sell it to them. Oh, please come and get it. They're fighting, kicking and screaming, building custody and futures and options and everything to come get this from you. You, the regular guy. I know I've said this a lot recently, but fuck sticks. It's not a joke. This is once in a lifetime. Yeah, where you, the regular guy, has the asset that these rich guys want. It never happens like that. They are the ones with the Facebook and shit, and then IPO it to us. Yeah, well, we're IPOing it to them this time, if you kind of want to look at it that way, right? Yeah, fuck stick. Now, with any IPO, well, you better have a good product. And that's why your cryptocurrency warehouse to be built big. Bang! It's got to be built fat. Bang! And it's got to have a revenue-generating product. I think I preached about it on Saturday, didn't I? Something about that. Like, right? I told you all oh, the grandma test. I told you. Yeah. As long as you have, as long as you're invested in, like I said, there are two things here. There's cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Zcash, Bitcoin Cash, Dash. Yeah, they're trying to be money. Cryptocurrencies. Yeah, yeah. The rest of these, VeChain, IOTA, Stellar, Factum. Yeah, they're, they're, they are blockchain services providers. Those are companies. Those are companies. And there's a big difference. And, uh, you know, it, that's what these investors are going to come for. Yeah, well, when they're going to come, they're going to look at, well, which companies are actually making money or being used, right? These companies are one thing, blockchain services providers. They have one product, a blockchain. But the blockchain can do multiple things, right? Like look at VeChain, right? It, it's in the cars, the Jaguars. It's in the, you know, Walmart. Uh, Deloitte uses their blockchain for whatever that is they use it for. We read the article, but it didn't say exactly. So that's what these are, right? And, uh, you know, that's why when I told her, it's taking candy. Well, let me put this up here so you guys can see it for sure. That's what I told her. This is taking candy from babies. If you are so stupid that you're invested in white paper, uh, look, I'm not dissing you, brother. I love you. I love all of you. That's why I do this shit for free. But let me tell you something. If your portfolio is filled with white papers and test nets, why? These motherfuckers, billionaires, are coming to get working product. They're coming to get it. Like, it's not, you don't have to sell it. You don't, I mean, oh, let me say it another way. You know, you don't have to beg them to come. They're fighting to come here. <laughs> we just read it, right? Bang. Right? With ETF proposals. Yeah, you know how much it costs to make an ETF proposal? Right? They're coming. And so 
That's why I'm telling you, look, if you were here for straight cash, that's what I'm here for. Like, I don't care about decentralization. Who gives a shit? I don't give a fuck as long as my email makes it to where it's got to go. I don't care. I don't care about decentralization. Now, any of this kind of crap like this kind of stupid stuff, but, you know, whatever, right? I'm here for straight cash and there's cash to be made here because these are viable companies. VeChain, IOTA, Chainlink, Factum, <sighs> fucking Sophia, Singularity Net. I hate that thing. <laughs> it's funny. Every time I think about it, there's actually a feeling in my heart like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but seriously, I don't like it. But uh, whatever. But you see, now we have viable companies. Um, and, and when these guys get here, well, what are they going to do? They're going to buy viable companies. They're not going to, first of all, they're not allowed to invest in test nets and white papers. They would get sued. You're not allowed to do that. You know, that's called due diligence. If you don't do what's called, if you're, a, if I'm a hedge fund manager and you give me your money, you give me a million dollars to invest it for you. I have to do what's called due diligence. Yeah, motherfucker. And if I lose your money and then we go to the judge, you know, and then you sue me and then we go to court <laughs> and you tell the judge, well, your honor, Shamari invested my shit in something called a white paper. The judge is going to be like, fuck that guilty, pay them back their money. Right. You're not allowed to do that. Right. It's called due diligence. Google that or, you know, look it up in Investopedia. So, uh, oh yeah, taking candy from baby and that's what we're doing, guys. This is too easy. Oh, and that's what I told her right there. There, I, what I said to her. I said, taking candy from a baby, sweet, from baby, sweetie. And look at the last two words, too easy. This is too easy. If you're here for real money, to make money, okay? Get your heart out of this shit, okay? Stop. Being emotional about, well, I bought this thing and I don't even know what you guys think because I'm not that kind of person. But just, you know, stop being emotional like you bought something, now it's down. So you're just holding and holding and, and hoping it. Please come back. Please come back. Why? Sell that shit and get shit you know is going to make you money in the future. Yeah, fuck stick. I mean. Uh, buy buy shit that's going to guarantee you money. Yeah, you might hodl something right now that's, maybe you're down on it. And I know, I know. There's a lot of you, you bought in, obviously, last year, and then through the bloodbath, and your holdings are down on whatever that one is, whatever that crypto, whatever that asset was, right? You're down on it. Yeah, but so what? You know, and you, what you, I know, I understand the average person thinks, well, I'll hodl and hope it comes back. Fuck it coming back. Sell it and buy something that you know is going to make you money when the institutions arrive. You understand? Like you're hoping that, well, when the institutions come, well, maybe it'll go up. Fuck all that. Just sell that shit and get the shit that you know that when the institutions arrive, <laughs> your money's going to fly. All right. All right. You know, like I so told you the other day on Saturday, it's not that you're stupid or something. Well, it didn't work. Yeah, well, that's on them. You're the investor. We are the investors. Those are our bitches. They have to perform. I bought you. I thought you'd perform. You didn't. Now get the fuck out of here. Like I told you, I, I said the thing on Saturday, like a sports manager, a sports team guy, a, a sports owner, team owner. Yeah, I buy, I buy, I buy fucking athletes. Yeah, and if that fucking athlete doesn't perform, well, get out of here next year. Does it mean that the owner is stupid or it's a, it's a, it's a knock on him? Nah, it's a knock on that athlete. You didn't perform enough for me to even keep you, you motherfucker. Do you understand? Look at it that way. But Shamori, I lost money on that. You didn't lose money on anything yet. The only way you lose money is when you take money out of the market. Oh, yeah, I didn't tell you guys this yet. That's true. All right, all right, hold on. The only way you lose money 
is when you remove money from the market. If I shift money around, that's not losing money. I've just shifted money. Right? So I buy this asset, it goes down. Fine. I am down, but the war isn't over. The war only ends when I take the money out. We're in a battle. We're in a war. And when you put money in, it, it, fine. It, it, here's the asset. Boom. You bought it here. It goes down. But Shamori, it's down. Yes. Yeah, so what? Transfer what money you have left to something that's going to make money. And when the tsunami comes, well, bang, you'll make money. Yes, you win. Do you understand? You only lose when you take money out of the market. If you go, well, I'm down, I'm taking money out, now you just lost money. But if you're down and you just shift it to another asset and that asset goes up, well, you won. You beat the market. Do you understand? All right? Shifting money around, what I call portfolio juggling, yeah, that's normal, motherfucker. The only way you lose is if you take money out. If you say, bang, I'm taking money out, well, you just lost. But as long as your money's still in there, just shift it over to something that's making money. And when that goes up, ha ha, bye, you win. All right. Holy. We yap yapped a lot about that. All right. So look. All right. Where were we? We were on Stallion. Where is she? Look, look, sweetie. Yes. Bye. I'm going to give you a great birthday present. Yes. She's born in Q1. Heading on over, sweetie. Don't you worry about it. Oh. Oh, fuck. This is perfect. Van Breeden. Yes, it's been a while. Van Breeden. Oh, man. We got to think of some good shit. Hold on. <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> My son. Oh, Van Breeden. I love you. Especially on a night like tonight with SEC revisiting shit and the UK coming with legal status. Look, look. Michelle. Oh, lay. My son. Oh, lay. Hold on. My precious jewel. The light of my eyes. <laughs> oh, and my favorite. Look, look. The fruit of my womb. <laughs> this is Michelle Van Bidian's mom. Yeah, this is Miss Van Bidian. Like I told you, when Noah Fest comes, she's going to be the guest of honor. I'm going to pay her. Pay for everything for her. Whatever you want, Miss Bambadine. Look, the fruit of my womb. Michelle, you sit downstairs on the computer all the day. <laughs> all the, every day, every night, you sit on the computer. Your friends, they want you to go. And have some drinks. Your wife. She hasn't. So it was six months last month. She hasn't seen you in seven months. <laughs> We're going to keep it going. She hasn't seen you in seven months, my son. Michelle. I ask you. And your lovely wife asks you. What are you doing downstairs, Michelle? Look, look. Ole, hold on. <laughs> Michelle's getting fueled. Hold on. Mama. Leave me, woman. Leave me, woman. You know nothing of these things. Mama, look. Maker DAO has come out with an interest paying collateral coin called DAI, woman. Look, woman. The SEC is revisiting the Bitwise ETF proposal. What do you think that means, woman? They are feeling the pressure now. They are feeling the pain now. They know now that they must Approve something now, woman. Look, which will bring liquidity and much money to the crypto market, woman. Look, 
And finally, <laughs> look, look, our brothers in Europe, uh, not Europe, the UK, they've defined the legal status of the crypto woman. Now the crypto is, hold on, let me look. I can't remember. <laughs> the crypto is tradable property, woman. And now the smart contracts will be regulated as enforceable agreements. Mama, look, look. You ask me, what am I doing downstairs? I'm investing in the crypto currency. Now, leave me, woman. And tell my wife, look, look, shut up, wife. I am about that whole life. Ah, <laughs> yes. If you guys don't know, if you're new here to this channel, actually, that's the that's the, the motto of the channel. The motto of this channel is, shut up, wife. I'm about that whole life. <laughs> yeah, if you're new. Yeah, we used to say that all the time last year. We, I've been said it this year, not once. This is the first time, yeah. Shut up, wife. I'm about that whole life. Bye. So what's about, brothers? That's what Van Beenen's about. Look, look. Bye. Yes. Van Beenen. Yes. Beenen. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Oh, Beenen's talking some stuff right here. What's he talking about? Oh, he's talking about what I just talked about. Yep. Uh, uh, reviewing reviewing its rejection of Bitwise Bitcoin ETF. Why are you reviewing it? Nothing has changed. I'll tell you why you're reviewing it. Because some politicians came around and said, look, look. We need some crypto. Why don't you take another look at that application? Maybe you missed something. Know what I mean? <laughs> That's how it goes, brothers. That's how it goes. <laughs> Perhaps you missed something. Know what I'm saying? Yes. Look, look. Bye. Poppy Wood. Look at Poppy. <clears throat> Where is he? Poppy would love your brother. See your brother. Bye. What's he talking about? Might do a replay of this tonight. Strictly vinyl powerhouse. Oh, okay. Oh, it looks like some DJ set. His name's not just DJ Poppy Wood for nothing. He's actually a real DJ. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Look. And then this is the thing I showed you about Stallion. All right, there we go. Here's the suspects. Hurricane Master. Bye. Son of a bitch. Bye, look, look, bye, look, look, bye. Yes. Edwin, love your brother, see your brother. Bye. Burke's big airdrop, love your brother, see your brother. Bye. Obviously, it says it has eight people here, so let's just go here and see who the other suspects are. Let's see who the other miscreants are. Rob Ert, love your brother, see your brother. Bye. Brent C, spy lady, love you, lady. Bye. Day peace, oh, brother. Look, look. Bye. All right. Is that everybody then? It's the usual suspects. What's DP talking about here? Oh, look at this. Yeah. DP said he's still still working on the arc. And look at this. That's how the arc looks. That's how it goes, brothers. That's your arc right there. Once a lifetime chance. Once a lifetime. You have the assets that the rich man wants. So you got to build your arc big. Bye. You got to build it fat. Bye. You got to build it nice. With working product. Working product. And that's how it goes. Look at that arc. Oh, that's a sweet piece of arc right there. Yes, yes. And you see how it you see how it is? All right? You see these store you see these storage areas down here? All right? That's his coin. Getting ready to head on in that arc. So I gotta do it, brothers. No fest. See you there soon. Mm, but we gotta go through this bullshit first. But bye, we're gonna get there. Bye. Yes. <laughs> DP, nice. Oh, Rob Ert. <laughs> yeah, he put this. Come on, do something. Watch this. Come on. <laughs> like a dead cat. Come on, wake up. That's funny. I like this picture because it's like a child's. Look at the drawing. It's so minimalist. Do something. <laughs> nice one, Rob Ert. Good. All right, one last guy here. Let's, let's get this fuck stick. Denny. Vote Sesame Seed Stake for something. Founding member. Ah, ah, bang! All right. Look, let's get out of here. Bang! Look! Yeah. 
All right, so we had a great show for you today. <laughs> if you're new here, it's the greatest show in the multiverse. You can expect that on a daily basis. <laughs> All right. Lock, lock. I'm being serious, though, now. Let's get serious. Maker DAO, multi-collateral DI. So, yeah, so uh, you're going to get that token if you're a maker holder. Um, you got to get, you can go get that new token now through that. Um, shit, I can't remember what. All right, let's take a look. Fuck. Let me take a look, and then I'll be back here in a second. You can get the new coin through. I was going to make sure my subscribers make their money, make their money. Uh, what's going on with my browser? All right, all right. Let's just get to this and get it over with because this isn't working. All right, but you can go get that coin and then put it on that um thing and you're going to get start earning interest today. Bye. Yes, now the SEC to revisit the Bitwise ETF proposal. I told you. Yeah, well, you know, they're getting leaned on. You know what I mean? Jay Clayton, yeah, he had a lot of mouth. Remember that video I showed you guys? The 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 oversight hearing uh, through the House of the SEC. Yeah, and they told him the one the one the one politician was like, "Well, hurry up." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you ask, well, why are they revisiting Shamari? Yeah, well, because some politicians said, "Look, look." Why don't you take another look? I don't think you looked hard enough. Maybe you missed something. Try again. <laughs> Meaning, we need this. Look! And then finally, the UK defines crypto legal status. Oh, dag on it. So they don't get to get on the champion nation list yet. All right, here's the list. You know, they don't get, you know, they don't get to get, because you can see them right here, right? Where are they? Right here, you see, since since last year we had them right and you see how it has a question mark beside it so the champion nation the champion nations well whoa, 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 my hands all wobbly so all the champion nations wait are these ones they've passed their laws but these nations here are the ones we're kind of waiting for that have have sort of said they're going to start doing stuff but they haven't done it fully yet and so the UK has done the most out of these guys. And, um, you know, but they're not champion nation worthy yet because they still have a bunch of stuff to sort out. But this is great news. Um, they've given the legal status. It's, what is it? Right? It's looked at as property. Let me look at it. Yeah, tradable property. And the, the smart contracts are going to be enforceable agreements. So, bang, great stuff, great stuff. So, well then, let's, I got more for you tomorrow, man. Fuck, I got, I had a couple more, but look, look, we'll get to it. Let me just tell you something, though. There is a champion nation I'm going to, well, they're not champions yet. But there's someone fighting to be in a champion nation. And we're going to talk about them tomorrow. So stay tuned for tomorrow. Because we got someone fighting to be on the coveted, the coveted, glorious champion cryptocurrency blockchain news, CB Newswire, champion nations. And we're going to talk about them tomorrow. No ass. So until then, brothers, bang, let's shill it and kill it. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. So subscribe below. Press the notification button so you get notifications when I do this show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show in the multiverse. Look, look. My name is Shamar Clark. Love talking money. Love talking crypto. This is the favorite time of my day. So, thank you for having me in your home. Until tomorrow, I'll see you. Until then, look, look, my name's Shamar Clark. Oh, yeah, fuck stick. I'm always on duty. Bye. Yeah. Ha-ha. <laughs> oh, this is some good stuff, baby. We're going to get rich. Bye. Over and out.